If you've ever attempted a SSH connection with a remote server and received this message, it could be a little alarming. You're told in all capital letters that it is possible that someone is doing something nasty. Someone could be eavesdropping on you right now, a man in the middle attack. In this guide, I'm going to explain why you might be seeing this message and how to resolve it. So jumping in, this message can occur when there's a mismatch between security keys used to authenticate connections with a remote server. And to understand the security key system, let me switch to a different tab. I'm going to initiate a SSH connection with a brand new server I've just set up. So in other words, it's a server I have never connected to before. And when I do this, the SSH protocol is going to respond with this message that basically tells me, we don't recognize the server that you're connected to. You've never connected to it before. Are you sure that you trust it and you want to continue connecting? And I'll go ahead and type yes and hit enter. And because I have SSH keys set up with the server, I'm directly logged in. But if we rewind in the output, we can see that before the connection was made, it tells us that it added this host to our list of known hosts. And as evidence of this, let me open up my computer's known hosts file. Uh, to do that, let me first exit out of this server and I'll move into my computer's SSH directory. And then within here, I should have a file called known host. Let's look at the contents of that. We'll just use the cat command. And we should see reference to that server we just connected to, as well as a encrypted public key uh, associated with that server. Now, in my case, there's only one server record within my known host file, just because I cleared it out before recording this video. But in your case, you're probably going to see uh, reference to several servers here. Basically, anytime you have connected to some outside server, it's going to go through that process I just showed of asking you to authenticate that you trust the server. And then it's going to record a record of that in this known host file. Now, once this recording has happened, there's two, I guess you could say, outcomes. Uh, the first is that any future connections you attempt to make to the server, they're just going to go through. You're not going to see that prompt asking you if you trust the server because it's going to look in your known host file and see that you've already indicated you trust the server. It's going to allow the connection. The second outcome is that for any of your connections with the server, it's going to use this public key to secure that connection. And the way it does that is via a challenge response authentication protocol, which involves these steps. First, when you initiate a connection request, the remote server will respond with a message that has been encrypted with a private key. Upon receiving the message, your system needs to decrypt it using the public key you have stored in your known host file and send the results back. And if your response matches the expected value, the connection will be established. If your response does not match the expected value, the connection will fail and you'll see the daunting message that we started this video with. Now to understand why it failed, there's two possible reasons. The first reason is you could be undergoing a man in the middle attack, which is a kind of cyber attack where somebody is essentially listening in on your network traffic and tampering with the data that you're trying to send back and forth with this remote server. And the evidence of that is just that these two security keys, the one on your server and the one on the remote server, they're not matching up as expected. So there's potentially something funny going on there. Uh, more likely though, what is probably actually happening is that the server you're trying to connect to has changed their key on their side. And to understand why that happens, I have uh, two examples where I've encountered this in the past. Uh, the first just happened recently. Uh, March of 2023, github.com uh, actually changed their host keys. Uh, there's a blog post about it. If you want to read more, I'll link it in the video description. Uh, but basically, they had accidentally published their private key in a uh, public repository, thereby compromising it. And when that happens, if some nefarious uh, cyber criminal had discovered it, uh, basically, they could have used that key to uh, impersonate the GitHub servers uh, and perform one of those man in the middle attacks. Right now, it doesn't mean that a man in the middle attack uh, occurred in this instance. It just opened it up for that possibility, and so they uh, went ahead and replaced their keys out of a abundance of caution. Another example of when I've encountered this message was on a server that I managed. I had done a fresh install of a new operating system, basically wiping that server clean. And in the process, the uh, host keys got regenerated there. So the next time I went to connect to that server, that challenge response authentication protocol I described earlier failed and I saw this message. So now that we understand why we might be seeing this message, let's talk about how to resolve it. Uh, and specifically, I'm going to show how to resolve it for this server that I'm trying to connect to. As you can see, obviously, I'm facing this problem. So I'm going to fix this. 
Uh, and what I'm going to do to fix it is I'm going to go into that known host file in my computer's SSH directory, and I'm going to remove the record related to this server. So let me just pull that file up in my code editor. All right, and again, in my case, I only have one record here just for the purposes of this video. But if I had multiple, I would just find the row that starts with the host name or the IP address of the server I'm troubleshooting, and then delete that row from this file. And now coming back to command line, if I attempt to uh, SSH into that server again, I should see that prompt from the SSH protocol asking me if I trust the server. Uh, and the reason it's doing this is because it doesn't see a record for the server in my known host file anymore. So I'm going to say yes, hit enter. All right, and that should update my computer's known host file with an updated key that should work when I go to connect to the server. Uh, and obviously we can see that worked, I connected, but let's just exit out and attempt that connection again. And there we go, we're not seeing any nasty warning messages. It's also not prompting us to verify that we trust the server because we've already done that. So in short, a very quick fix, uh, simply just delete the record in your known host file and reattempt a connection. Now in this situation, uh, rewinding back to the step where we indicated that we trusted this remote server, uh, I went ahead and said yes to this because this is a server that I manage um, and I had purposely created this problem. So I knew, you know, what had gone wrong here. So there wasn't any reason I shouldn't trust this server. Uh, but if you're dealing with some server that you don't manage, uh, you have any sort of concerns about a man in the middle attack, uh, one thing you should do is verify uh, that this key fingerprint that they're returning to matches the fingerprint of the server that you're trying to connect to. And as an example of this, let me go back to that uh, GitHub blog post because at the very end they have a link uh, to their documentation where they have their public key fingerprints published. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here's the key fingerprints, and then here is the uh, key entries that you should end up seeing in your known host file. Uh, and there's several listed here just because there's different encryption technologies used for these keys. Um, so let me actually demonstrate this. Because I had cleared my known host file, I'm going to uh, attempt to connect to the GitHub servers, and it should send me through this whole process of trusting their servers. All right, so let me exit out of my server, and I'm just going to do a connection to git at GitHub. Dot com. All right, it's asking me if I trust the server and here's the fingerprint that it's showing me. So I'm just gonna copy this and then search this documentation page and just make sure that I find that there. So that looks good, that's valid. So I'm gonna say, yes, I trust the server. And then I should see that reflected in my known host file. So now I have two records here, one for my server and then one for the github.com servers. And with that, I'm all back on track. Uh, no more scary messages when I attempt to connect to these particular remote servers. Uh, hopefully this information helped you as well. If it didn't, if you ran into any problems with any of these steps, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to help you troubleshoot.